Denpasar's Sangla Hospital was designed to cope with the needs of a holiday island, not a terrorist attack. But on October 12, 2002, it became the focal point for hundreds of Australians who walked down these corridors to find out whether their loved ones were dead or alive. In the past time, maybe only sick uh, victims come here, but after that, more and more, yeah, and in a bad condition, uh, like uh, very severe burn, and also uh, the victim become many, many body parts. At first, few people had much idea of the scale of the disaster. But as the hours ticked by, more and more victims began arriving at Sengla. We uh, collect the victim in here. Yeah, we collect. But after that, the victim come more and more. Yeah, we uh, collect outside here in autopsy room. The pressure on facilities inside the hospital was so great that most of the bodies soon had to be moved outside. Several football teams had been enjoying end of season holidays at the time of the bombings. Among those desperately trying to identify teammates was Daniel Mortensen from Sydney's Coogee Dolphins Rugby League Club. I was basically coming backwards and forwards about four times that day and bodies were just coming, coming and coming. It was just overwhelming, too overwhelming. The scene outside was a disturbing one for families. Bodies lay under plastic sheets in the tropical sun under the shade of the hospital walkways. Slabs of ice had to be used to prevent the bodies from decomposing, which in itself presented a health threat. Scores of open-top coffins lay nearby in the grounds, waiting to be filled. Back in those days, Sangla Hospital had the facilities to cope with 10 bodies, but all of a sudden, overnight, it was being asked to cope with 202, and all it had to do it with was 10 refrigeration units like these. In this container, many victims. Yes. There might be more than 60 victims. 60? Yeah. Emotions were running high. Doctors working around the clock had to keep their feelings in check. Because we are doctors, yeah, we must be impartial. That means must be neutral. Yeah, uh, we must do no sad, no appear like that. Yeah, we only just do my uh, duty. But even 10 years later, the families and friends of the victims still struggle with their emotions. Uh, you know, closure is a funny word. I don't think there is such a thing as closure. I think it's just, it's just something that I sort of, I wanted to get off my back. So I don't, I, don't know, I can't really put words to it to tell you the truth. But um, you know, coming out here this morning, it's. Um, and walking through here was very overwhelming. Um, I felt sick as soon as I walked in here and um, I feel very emotional just standing here to tell the truth. The families had no idea back then that this evil plot was hatched just five minutes drive away from the hospital. It was in this rented house that the Bali killers prepared the bombs that would kill 202 people. It was Australia's greatest peacetime loss on foreign soil.